Hey guys, it's Nerd Mom here. Wow, I am just seeing how much glare I'm having everywhere. Let me... Is the Hulk the problem? The Hulk was part of the problem. Um, so today is the 6th of April and I am doing another VEDA, trying to be faithful. And today I am talking about yard plants and gardening and oy vey. Hi Kelly, how are you doing? Um, yard plants. So I don't know what the weather's like where you guys are right now, but here in Fresno, spring has sprung and spring is exploding, which means allergies are exploding for me. Big nerdy girl with nerdy allergies. And I recently moved in, well, not really recently, but I moved into my house in um, August of last year. So I'm still in that first calendar year kind of thing and first set of seasons in this house. And, oh, oh, Kelly doesn't have any plants. She doesn't have a yard. Well, that just doesn't mean anything. I remember having an apartment and um, on my patio and in a window, I had chives and chocolate, was it chocolate peppermint and basil in just pots. And so it's not really yard plants, but I had some fresh herbs and it made everything so tasty in my house. So you don't need a yard to really get some gardening plants going, but dirt does make it easier. I do have to say, it makes it a little easier. But yeah, I, I've been really happy with the size of our yard in many ways, but my problem is like every inch of this area is either grass, which we love because it's low maintenance, have a 14 year old mow it, or we have plants everywhere, everywhere. In the back of my house, which is just adjacent to my office, I'm looking out there right now, there's this area like along a walkway, but it's like two or three feet deep. And it would be a great place to do like some square foot gardening. The problem is there's plants in it. And oh, yummy. Kelly has a patio garden with chives, rosemary, basil, sage, aloe lettuces and an orange tree. Oh, we have citrus here. And for me, that's a huge part of our yard plants. We have to trim those puppies back because they are going nuts all over my yard. I have, um, well, what all do we have? We've got grapefruit, the size of your head, but it's not pink grapefruit. It's just yellow grapefruit. We have mandarins, we have lemons and we have oranges. So that's, that is, was a big selling point, honestly, in this house a little bit because I've always wanted my citrus trees. I grew up with lemon trees and my grandmother had orange trees. So yeah, but so my gardening, I have this beautiful area that would be great for square foot gardening. The problem is it's full of plants that would need to be relocated or thrown out. I think I know people I could give some of them to, but it looks like just to start setting it up would take me probably eight hours and it's eight hours I don't have. So I may not do a whole lot with my yard this year. I may not do a whole lot planting. I really wanted to um, put some tomatoes out there and put some herbs out there, but we'll see how that goes this year. Someone recommended to me that I grow nothing new this year and just get a, uh, make a diagram of my yard. And as things start blooming, note what they are, when they bloom and what they look like and how much they make me sneeze and then make some decisions after that. Because like I have a brick wall. Let me flip you around. Oh, no, you can see nothing out those windows, but you can't see the mess of my office, awesome. Um, I have some stained glass windows on the other side of my office. You can see this brick wall where we have, um, I think we've got honeysuckle and geraniums and some other stuff. How's that for specific? Growing on it and it's gorgeous. And, but it's that whole, what do you want versus what's there? So I am in a period of, I guess, research with my yard plans and my gardening plans. Yeah. We have to reseed though. Part of the problem of being in California is everyone uh, quit watering last summer because the drought was so bad, especially those people who are selling houses. So we put our offer in on this house in the beginning, no, in the end of May. And I think as soon as it was accepted, the previous owner of this house turned off all water to the yard and just kind of quit on it. And so we have major, major patches of dead grass. 
I haven't. Uh, Kelly's asking if I've read anything about permaculture gardening. No. What? Tell me a little bit more about that, Kelly. Do you mean like the artificial grass or doing like rocks? My fear with artificial grass is I hear it gets really hot and we have a pool. Oh no, no, it's not that. Okay. Cause here in Fresno, we do have a few companies that do the uh, artificial and, and it's not artificial turf. It's an artificial grass and it looks really good, but I've heard it's really, really hot. And so since the kids will probably be out playing in the yard in their swimsuits, that's kind of a no go for us. Um, but I don't know. I've never, I grew up and I was the lawnmower for a long time, which I'm so glad I'm not now when I was younger. And my dad, um, did a really good job of the yard. We had very like manicured rose, Mary bushes, but we didn't have a lot of like say it's gardeny things we didn't have a lot of flowers we had roses in the back and I mean we had a cherry trees and a couple things but we didn't have like this house has a gajillion bulbs planted in it everywhere they're just coming up I mean to the point that they left pots with like uh, a root of a tree kind of thing I think it may be a rose bush a bare root rose bush that just hasn't bloomed and there are bulbs in that pot so <laughs> I am just overwhelmed with the plethora of um, just nature, I guess is the best way to put it. I'm such a geek. Okay, so it's a style of gardening where you set up your yard to have the highest maintenance stuff near the house. Oh, that is really interesting. I have to say it kind of goes against my gut reaction, which is put the highest maintenance stuff far away from the house. That way, if you don't get to it, it doesn't block your doors. But... <laughs> You know, that is kind of my, my initial gut reaction. Hey, seven clays. I see you joined. Um, my gut reaction though is it's kind of that whole thing of whatever could weed goes far, far away from the door. That way, if you don't get to it, you don't see it as soon, but that probably isn't the grown up way of handling these things. Yeah. It's probably not the grown up way. Yeah. Gaia's garden. Ooh, I'll have to check that out. I will. I will definitely check that out, Kelly. Because, yeah, we're finally at that point where, you know, I guess there's just enough English and plenty of Irish in my blood that I've always loved the idea of a garden and and, and not just a garden. In, in England, a garden is just a, a really well done backyard. It's not necessarily vegetation, but the flowers and all that. And I love that idea, but I just kind of am overwhelmed where to start. Hey, Seven Glaze, I see you're back. Um, but I am really overwhelmed where to start. And part of my other problem is you can hire lots of gardeners who will like mow and edge. And that is not what I need help with. I have child labor for that. What I need help with is like pruning out my flower, my flower beds and figuring out how far things need to be trimmed back without killing them and coming up with a plan of where to plan things. Hey, that child labor's cost me a lot of money, Kelly. <laughs> I do though. I, my 14 year old mows and I've got a 12, 10 and eight year old and they will help. Like if you trim back stuff that doesn't have too many thorns in it, they'll pick it up and take care of it all for you. But they don't exactly have the judgment of trimming back bushes or trimming back hedges. I mean, one of our problems is in, in our yard, in the front yard between our driveway and our neighbor's driveway, we have two different types of bushes that are growing. And I mean, when I say they're growing, I mean they're growing 10 feet in the air. And it's great for privacy. The problem is I'm allergic to both of them. Oh, that's so sweet of you. She's distracted by my top. It's actually a dress. I'll stand up. It's it's a little grecian -y kind of dress. I picked it up a couple years ago at Ross for I think seriously eight bucks. And it is so easy to wear. I wore it to the gym this morning over my swimsuit. So but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm so lazy that I'm, you know, I wear my clothes to the gym over my swimsuit for water aerobics and just change into them after. So, but yeah, so the, the stuff in between the driveways I'm allergic to and I don't want to start over and I don't know how to go to the neighbors and go, knock, knock, knock. Can we yank all that out? Um, oh, Kelly, I am in Fresno. So I'm about three hours from you. And yeah, what's the weather like where you're at today? Here it's supposed to be 88 degrees and this weekend it's supposed to rain. 
seriously, I think Friday it's supposed to rain again, which is great. Here in California, we need the water, but it also, how do I say this? It makes figuring out what season you're in and what to plant a little hard. Oh, Hyades there too. At least you guys cool off though. Five o'clock is when it will hit 88 here. So the evenings are pretty warm. But that is one thing I do have to say when we talk about yard work. Having all of this, I'm going to call it vegetation. I notice we get more breezes. It's much cooler than our yard was in our last house. Just, you know, a half hour away. Same weather, same everything. But it was like more dirt and play structures than actual grass. And so I do have to say that having all the plants and having all that at least makes the yard seem cooler, even if it's just a mental game. I'm willing to play it. I'm willing to play that mental game. But yeah, I, I don't know. I know uh, Seven Clays, I know that there are plans for your backyard because I was hearing about them. Um, they, they have allergies also. And uh, Mr. Clay was talking about yanking out some more of the stuff that they're all allergic to. And on one hand, I would love to do that here. On the other hand, I want it so badly to work. Yeah, too many allergies. I get that, hun. I, you are preaching to the choir. I am allergic to, well, a lot. But one of the things I am glad I'm not allergic to is I don't seem to be allergic to citrus. So we have plenty of citrus in our backyard. Even in our last house, you could smell the citrus orchards from our backyard when everything was in bloom. So as long as I know I'm not allergic to oranges, I'm hoping I'm not allergic to lemons because that is what's blooming in my yard right now. I'm not sure about the rest. Um, I'm thinking about what good things do I have growing in my yard? So the yummy things I have growing though that I'm trying to nurture is, like I said, I have um, tangerines, I have oranges, I have lemons, I have grapefruits. My front yard has a brick box where I have hydrangeas. Oh, okay. Seven Clay say to be careful with citrus and I need to talk to them later about what to be careful about. Um, our citrus though, what I didn't realize is I grew up with lemon trees in the backyard. It was like one lemon tree. And I think it was a hybrid like grapefruity lemon tree because like one year it froze here in Fresno when I was a kid. And all of a sudden all our lemons had this much um, white pith in them. <laughs> it was a little bit of lemon in this thick. Um, but it was just the one and it was small. My dad kept it very small so you could like stand over it and pick everything. These are huge trees. But like, especially the grapefruit, but even the lemon have thorns. And when I say have thorns, when we moved in last fall, my son was outside playing and stepped on a grapefruit thorn and it went all the way through his shoe. I mean, we're talking, uh. so we had to trim back our citrus so it doesn't uh, contaminate the yard. Yeah, he came in from playing and it was like, I stepped on something and I'm thinking, you know, it's a relatively new yard to us. Maybe somebody left, you know, a mail or their pieces of wood around and stuff like that. And then we went out there and it was a citrus. It was a grapefruit thorn. So that's one of the reasons that when kids are over in our house, we tell them to not jump into the flower beds and play over by where those trees are because we have no idea how much is down there. We also have figs growing in our backyard. Now I am in an area of town that is part of Fig Garden. It's also part of the Buller High area, but we call it Fig Garden because it's across the street from the Fig Garden, Garden Shopping Plaza. Plaza, yeah. And um, it used to be fig orchards here in Fresno. And we actually have some fig trees in our backyard. I've never really done anything with fresh figs. I've only done figs in um, restaurants. And these don't seem to be the mission figs that my neighbors had in my old house. So it's going to be interesting to see them ripen. Ripen. That's the word I'm going for. And then we also have some things, and I'm wondering what they are. Um, I don't think they're apricots. I think they may be like a kumquat. And they're about this big, and they're kind of orange. And there's just one tree. And I don't even know completely if it's our tree or the neighbor's tree that's growing over. And we saw them at the end of the season last year. And so I'm not quite sure what it is. The other things we have is we do have a rosemary bush. And then in my front yard, I started to say um, we have a bricked-in planter. And it is full of mint. If you live around me, like the seven clays do, and you need mint for anything, just when you're over, pick some, put it in some water, 
in your fridge and it'll stay forever because I have more mint than anyone in the world would ever need. Yeah. Kelly says kumquats and apricots have different leaf styles. That's why I say the fruit looks a little like an apricot, but the tree doesn't. That's what makes me think that maybe it's a kumquat. Um, and somebody else has suggested that maybe it was a kumquat. Uh, I am sure that in the future I will be posting some pictures of the fruit and of the leaves and crowdsourcing <laughs> because like I said, gardening is not, not my jam in many ways. I can grow a mean tomato. I can grow some fabulous zucchini. I can grow some decent herbs, corn. I can grow corn. I know how to do that. Pruning trees and flowers and bulbs, nah, not so much. But it's going to be interesting to try. My biggest problem right now is squeezing out the time to go hang out in my yard. And life is so busy. I've got women's retreat this weekend. I have taxes I still need to finish before I can go to women's retreat. I have work. I have homeschooling. So I, I may be looking for a landscaper, I guess. I don't know. I don't know exactly how to word what I am looking for but I need something other than just somebody to mow my lawn. I need somebody who can actually like advise me. So if you guys know anyone in the Fresno area who is looking to build a portfolio for landscaping possibly, um, or who knows a lot about it and feels sorry for a nerdy little girl who's allergic to the world, uh, give me their name or send them, send them mine. And <laughs> we'll see if we can work something out. <laughs> Because I would really like to get this yard looking beautiful. Because I really know it can. And I mean, it's nice now. It's just a little overgrown and jungly. But, so that's my yard plans. Yes, um, Kelly was suggesting a nice garden center. I do, um, there are some really nice garden centers here. I mean, I'm in Fresno. I'm in the agricultural center of the world. And they'll give you some great advice. But what I actually need is I need to figure out how to hire somebody to come out and do some of the actual work. Um, Jeremy and I discovered many years ago, because I always did like square foot gardening. And as long as all the weeds were cleared out of the yard for me, I could go in and do the work, but the weeds would kill me. Yeah, Kelly, they may, they may know some people to ask. And that may be, um, I think it's Sierra View Nursery here in town is someplace I've gone before and um, the woman who owns it is really awesome. And if you ever want to do a garden around here, I, I believe it is Sierra View Nursery. It's over on Academy. She'll help you draw it out. She'll get out a little grid and draw out all the plants for you and help you pick out everything you need. She's really awesome. So I may um, contact her and I'm part of a local gardening group. So I need to find out. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, I will definitely be researching that permaculture because I do really love square foot gardening. Um, I think that you don't waste as much space and you get a really good yield for it. And it's something I remember watching the shows that, that were on PBS when I was a kid and I do have the book and I do use it as a guide when I garden to the point that a few years ago, Jeremy had even built me out some frames so that I could just dump dirt in. My problem was where we were at, I needed deeper frames, but here obviously things are growing. So maybe I can actually... You know, do that. Oh yeah, that is cool. Make friends with the people who square foot garden because they really do get a lot of output, especially if they like to grow zucchini and tomatoes like everyone else. And no one likes to throw away food. So, you know, you might just have to volunteer to take some of it for them. So let me know what your guys' plans are. Um, if you're watching this in replay, thank you so much. And thank you guys. For watching make sure you subscribe and if you're watching this on YouTube go ahead and subscribe and you can also find pictures of my gardening and other weird things over on my Instagram where I'm the nerd mom have a great day and thank you for the hearts bye